I was checking up with Pokemon Scarlet and Violet through a Google search, and this article came up. The six things we Pokemon veterans want to see in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. And my first thought was a reaction probably going to make for good content because these articles are always awful. So if you enjoy the video, don't forget to leave a like, comment your thoughts down below, and share it with your friends who are also Pokemon veterans. So the year was 1998. The Spice Girls were blowing up radio stations and Nintendo had every kid under the age of 15 glued to their Game Boys playing Pokemon Red and Blue. Many of those kids, including some of us here at Nintendo Life, are now in their 30s and therefore not long for this world. Bad joke. And it feels like Pokemon hasn't aged with us older players. Bad take. In fact, many Pokemon games have decreased in both difficulty and complexity release after release. It's gotten to the point where Pokemon veterans sincerely hope Game Freak adds or removes several features to make the games more challenging. And this is where I know the article is going to be terrible, and you can already predict the first one. Like, whenever I see an article like this, I can guarantee that hard mode or challenge mode is going to be on the list. And there we go. It's also crazy because the Elite Four in Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl is some of the most annoyingly difficult crap that's ever been put into a main series Pokemon game, but now nah, Game Freak's not growing up with us. Pokemon Let's Go was actually targeted for adult audiences as well. Same thing with Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. They've already said it's for all ages, but no, nah, that, that, that doesn't count either. And yeah, I'm just... And th another thing about Pokemon Let's Go that I will always reiterate is that it gave everything Pokemon fans wanted. You can go through the checklist and find in Pokemon Let's Go. Nah, it didn't count. So, wow, that that's it. Like, the list has a couple sentences for that, that thing. Weird. I was hoping for more elaboration, but I guess, like, you're either pro hard mode or you're against hard mode and nothing else really needs to be said. So we want Pokemon games to be about as difficult as deciding what to eat for dinner. God, man, these are the most dry jokes ever. Um, January's Pokemon Legends Arceus took a step in the right direction. Objectively false. The- the boss mechanics are weaker than- like, the new Kirby game is more difficult boss mechanics. And then also just compared to Breath of the Wild and other Nintendo games, and it doesn't even need to be close to Elden Ring, but okay. Adding a layer of challenge? No, the game just held your hand and made it free the entire way through. Pokemon Black and White 2? There it is. Dabbled with a higher difficulty in the most Pokemon way possible. They locked it behind trading- or- Trading through a key through the Unova Link feature obtained Pokemon Black and White 2, meaning to experience a higher degree of difficulty, you had to beat the game first and have a friend trade with you to unlock challenge mode. That's like just the dumbest thing for no reason, and it doesn't do anything, and why would you want to replay your Pokemon game when it's about progression into the post game? We're old, a game freak, we don't have friends anymore, give us challenge mode from the very beginning. So, they want a challenge mode like an older Pokemon game, but they don't want it to be like that older Pokemon game, and hard mode is just complete garbage in for Generation 5 anyways. Like, it doesn't add any difficulty to the game, because once you understand type matchups, efficient moveset usage, like same type attack bonuses, and maybe integrating some status or X items, no Pokemon game will ever be difficult, but okay. And then we have an engaging endgame. But we already have that in all the po- DLC Pokemon Sword and Shield! Just all the quality of life in Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee. But no, what happens is everyone just like gets hacked Pokemon once they beat the game and then complain that there's no content for getting competitive and then they complain that all the content about making a competitive Pokemon doesn't count because hacking is just the smart big brain move and you shouldn't be wasting your life playing Pokemon. So like there's so much the games have to offer but everyone cheats their way through it and then complains about no difficulty and no post game. Every time, like clockwork, I have this argument pre-baked because it's been happening for over the last half decade and every idiot with a blog is putting it in things they want in Pokemon games. Great. Awesome. Uh, we'll admit Generation 1 didn't have the best endgame. Wrong. Like, Generation 1 is some of the most time I've put into a Pokemon game. Like, but alright. Especially like for its time. Even going back to it, I shiny hunted a Porygon in Generation 1 because that shit's possible in the virtual console. That was awesome. And also just a lot of the other things like getting all the Pokemon, training. I even did a little bit of like Gen 1 virtual console competitive because that shit was cool. But alright, sure. Particularly Battle Frontiers, Pokemon Emerald, Heart, Gold, Soul, Silver. Battle Frontiers awful. 
Like, there's no point to it, and Game Freak said why, because most players aren't going to engage with that. Why make so much content that 99% of players are going to ignore when you can just have better, more engaging post-game stuff? Like, I only go to one facility, the Battle Tower, because everything else is nonsense, and it doesn't help, and it's not really that great. Alright, uh, because of focus on story-driven content, the Delta episode, Team Rainbow Rocket, Isle of Armor, uh, rewards for post-game are often lacking. Nah. Battle points which players buy in-game items aren't enough to keep us coming back. They are if you're not hacking your game every five seconds. Uh, hashtag Wolfie lied. He's still a fraud. He only won worlds because he had an impossible Raichu no one else could have gotten. We like a return of something as deep as the Battle Frontier. There's nothing deep or me What do you mean deep and meaningful rewards? It just gives battle points with more tedious gameplay. Okay. Uh, perhaps shiny Pokemon. What? Already worthless because of aforementioned hacking. Alternate forms or increasingly greater challenge, but what happens is people hack a team, take it to the battle tower, get a 31 streak, realize they don't need any battle points, say game's too easy. Even though it does get progressively difficult. Man, Brilliant Diamond Shine Pearl battle tower, that like a uh, super mode, not even not even close to fair. Uh, to help distract, like the first game I want to get, or first match, or like first uh, streak, I went against Crocoon. How am I supposed to handle that? Can't. Telep distract us from crippling anxiety recent real world events have instilled in us. Ah, so we have a sheltered weak individual writing this. That makes sense. Accessible team building. I, I didn't even think it was going to be this predictable. Where I've been calling out like, oh, they hack and then complain about no end game and no challenge. And then they just want Pokemon handed to them for free. So wh what's the point of having a post game? If there's like an in-game battle simulator, what's the point of a challenge if you just get all of your Pokemon for free and then run it into competitive? Hatching 78 Bulbous Sword to get six perfect IVs isn't difficult. It's as tedious as our pre-pandemic commutes to work. Oh my god. This is how you can tell the Pokemon. I this guy can't be in his 30s. This guy can't be a Pokemon veteran. This is someone that came in in Generation 5 and is trying to get clout. He is way too fragile of an individual. Uh, where other competitive games focus on game player, oh um, it's almost, this guy, I, I, I almost want to guarantee this guy is banned on my channel for, like, commenting on a wolf hacking video saying that if po Pokemon stats are possible, then it doesn't matter. Or, like, a VGC video where I complain about cheating. And the, the sad thing is, breeding is a skill. Like, someone that's skilled at breeding will get Pokemon in fractions of the time. Like, it's more than just hatching 78 Bulbasaur to get 6 perfect IVs. If you know what you're doing, you can do that a lot faster. And while it is a grind, every competitive sport and eSport demands sacrifice. Each game is different. Comparing Pokemon, we're like, oh, well, you know, in this game, you don't have to get your stuff. And in chess, you don't carve your own pieces. That, that, that doesn't translate, because it's all about... Whatever the d game or sport demands of you. Pokemon games, are con okay, um, where they can b build their skills, test out new strategies as the metagame evolves. Poke well, the metagame only evolves too fast for legitimate players because of all the hacking. Pokemon games are content with wasting our time hatching hundreds of eggs just to build a valuable team. Oh, content. I thought that was like content, but it's content with wasting our time. This can take hours, even with plenty of helpful items. So, yeah, all of the great stuff. All of the quality of life doesn't matter. Again, another theme that I started off this video with, that people ignore the quality of life and their complaints that are answered in modern Pokemon games. The entitlement of the Pokemon community. You can see it through the hacking, you can also see it in the complaints. And it's been, again, going on for a decade at this point. Arceus forbid, bad joke, want to make a minor adjustment to our team, such as lowering raising speed stats based on meta changes, because that could zap away those precious few hours before 9.30 bedtimes. Wow, just awful, two awful jokes in the same sentence, my god. Um, individ IVs and EVs need further streamlining. Further! Yeah, this guy, this, there's no way this guy's an old Pokemon fan. He might have even come in, like, Generation 6. Because the jump with, like, the Destiny Knot, people actually wanted to breed Pokemon in X and Y and Omega Manaf Sapphire, and that's what launched my channel, because people were down with it. And then, like, all the cheaters just came in and ruined it for everyone. My, I'm just, Wow. Like, the only thing we need is a Rusty Bottle Cap, really, but, like, you sh if, you if you're going to get a zero IV Pokemon, you know that from the start. Uh, much like the rewards, and also, competitive incentive. Pokemon Sword and Shield had the best competitive incentive. You get Master Tier, which is, like, a, a prize in its own. You have a really 
cool sounding, high, flashy ranking you can show off to your friends. Now, it ended up pretty much like everyone eventually float to Master Chief, but like you get that early or you get that all the time or you get like top 1000, you're like, yo, look at this. And then you get golden bottle caps and all kinds of really cool items for the rewards and then you get more competitive Pokemon for it. So again, like, yeah, the post, like, all this is doing is explaining how Pokemon is already great, and then just complaining about nothing. Much like the rewards given post-game content, incentives to play Pokemon competitively are bare bones. This guy's never played a competitive Pokemon match in his life. Or, he again, he hacks everything, gets the rewards for making it to Grape Ball tier, and then realizes he can't do anything with it. Use senior, us senior po Pokemon players require a constant drift feed of affirmation of our abilities. You mean, ranking up. Yeah, advancement through each tier relies entirely on wins and losses rather than the matchmaking system to place players against those of similar skill. Yo, this kid's trash. This kid's undercooked? No. The ranking system was great. I was incredibly satisfied by it. I actually got stuck in Great Ball tier and then complained about it. Oh, only folks. I beat a guy in Ultra. I should have jumped to Master, yo. I should have gotten 50 win points for that. No, like, the, yo, getting stuck in Ultra Ball feels bad, for sure. Or getting, like, gate kept out of Ultra in, like, those last couple of Great Ball wins feels bad. But it shows that the tiering system actually works properly, and you need to get the set amount of points, and you need to earn your way into it. This kid couldn't do it because he hacks his Pokemon, doesn't appreciate anything about the content inside the games, and now he just wants everything to be hand-fed. Again, entitlement Pokemon on a whole new level. Please share this video with everyone. It's actually incredible. Um, a new player with a half-developed team might get matched against a professional player practicing VGC. Nah. You don't get matched against Ultra Ball or Master if you're in Pokeball. Um, both negating any sense of progression. Ah, this is the whole, like, skill-based matchmaking argument, too. Fascinating. And then making online Pokemon needlessly daunting to get into. Nah. And, and also, it's not players practicing for VGC World Championships. It's hackers cheating online, making you feel bad. Us senior Pokemon players con like require a constant drip feed of affirmation. I mean, you get it if you're good. Receiving none from our day jobs and emotional... God. Jesus. God. This. This captures it. Because I wonder how many people are relating to this article. And then you can just see every Pokemon. Just Wolf Click fans. A-Drive fans just sheltered repressed individuals that can't handle the real world and then they just need everything like and then they want creative mode pokemon so they don't feel bad oh man as of pokemon sword and shield we might as well read a book or take cooking class instead another evolution chonky pikachu we just got chonky pikachu and you show the chonky pikachu back in pokemon games black and white and we had to hike up a hill nah man i'm just done I'm just done with this. Okay. Yes, we're aware of the sounds a lot like old man yelling at kids to get off his lawn. No, like, an old man is more responsible and hardened and understands what the world is about. Not this entitled brattiness. Like, maybe I can understand him to be in his 30s because this does sound like the waste of millennials that are running around just ruined by internet culture and not wanting to work for anything in their lives that are dragging society down. But it's also the same thing we see, sentiment we see in Zoomers and just people in general. Just weak, fragile individuals. Pokemon is no longer made for us, or made for those who started playing in 1998. It's so weird, because, like, a lot of it's about not being hard enough. Yeah, like, there, we need a challenge mode, and we need a harder end game. But the challenge of getting competitive Pokemon, and the difficulty of ranking up in competitive, doesn't count. And... How like how is how does that mean it's not for you? You struggled against Agatha's Gengar? I didn't. And search on truck by the SSN for Mew? I didn't because I'm not an idiot. Also, I knew about missing no, so like why would I do that when I could just trainer flag glitch? Whatever. Uh, each subsequent Pokemon release has one audience in mind, children. Lie. And you can just go to interviews or just look at what they're saying about the game. Not video game critics in their thirties, and that's okay. Pokemon doesn't have to be made for us, even though they're still making it for you. That doesn't mean we can't dream. Pokemon Legends RC is shakeup for the formula to added complexity. Lie. And difficulty. Lie. Pokemon Legends still irredeemable shit. Um, we'll have a challenge. And then, like, 
Game Freak is... Okay, like, they're saying, because of Pokemon Legends, Game Freak is listening. Lie. Uh, maybe with Scarlet and Violet released later this year, we'll have a challenge worthy. But they already confirm completely open exploration for Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. This dude hasn't read the official information and still thinks Pokemon Legends is good, while everything else is too hard. How about real in innovation of the combat mechanics? The formula... Like, this makes no sense to me. Why... Pokemon succeeds because of what it is. I play Pokemon for the turn-based competitive strategy. If they change it, then you don't have Pokemon anymore, and it probably becomes too close to another game that's been doing it for a decade already. You know, like how Pokemon Legends is just trash because Elden Ring, Dark Souls, any action-based... Like, any action RPG is just infinitely better than Pokemon Legends Arceus combat-wise, and then they're trying to compete with... Uh, Monster Hunter, when Pokemon should just be trying to compete with itself to make the best possible Pokemon game. Uh, introduction of Stamina Meter for Pokemon is swappable moves outside of combat. Why? Overly restrictive 4 move hard limit. Dude, if there was 5 move slots, like, game's easy. Uh, I want Pokemon to have 6 moves. And for the party, be 8. But it'll never happen. Yeah, this is really just appealing to idiots and losers. We done here. This is this is awful.